welcome to Storyland SL. I'm Mokshini. And I'm Kavita. And welcome to Storyland SL's special event to mark World Environment Day. So the theme of this event is on being a jungle person. Two professionals and their passion for Sri Lanka's wildlife. We will be introducing them to you and we're so excited to be able to share uh, the insights that they will be so generously sharing with us this uh morning or evening or whatever time this event is going to be, uh, you know, shared online. But um, incidentally, this year's theme for World Environment Day is reimagine, recreate, restore. And the call to action is ecosystem restoration. And we have been mandated with the task to build a restoration generation. Kavita? Yes, that's right, Moki. So building a restoration generation and something that if, if you've tuned into our uh, story times before on Story Thursday or even our Meet the Author sessions, we've spoken to individuals from the country, from around the country, in fact, uh, talking to them about different messages. And in particular, the stories that we love featuring also include lots of animals. Uh, we talk a lot about nature as well. And today we are extremely honored to have with us two examples of the restoration generation, as it were, um, none other than Ashinsa De Silva Vijay Ratna and Manindra Dharmadasa. I'll begin by introducing Ashinsa to our audience today. Uh, Ashinsa holds a BSc Honours in Microbiology and Biotechnology from Edinburgh Napier University, UK. She currently works as a Biotech Content Coordinator for Kelsey Technologies and is the Head of Conservation for the Youth Wing of the Wildlife and Nature Protection Society of Sri Lanka. She thinks science is very cool and she loves talking about it, particularly through her Instagram handle, Biospeak. She's also the associate editor of the Sri Lankan Scientist magazine. And we think you are very cool, Ashinsa. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you very you. much. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. It's a pleasure to have you. Okay, so our next very special guest is Manindra. And Manindra is an old boy of Isipathana College, but he also is an alumni of the University of Westminster, UK. He is the head of consulting at Fortude Private Limited, um, and he's been to 12 countries doing work related to enterprise resource planning engagements. Manindra's main hobby is spending time in the jungles of Sri Lanka. He has been returning to the jungles for 32 years with his first visit being when he was just six months old. Um, his Instagram handle manindra.d features some of the photography uh, that he has taken and almost all of them feature the wildlife in Sri Lanka and their habitats. Welcome Manindra, so excited to be able to chat with you today. Thank you Mokshini for that intro. Uh, lovely to be uh, online with you guys. Thank you. Thank you both. So we'll start off. We've got a couple of questions that we want to pose to the both of you, uh, of course, about the work that you do, but also the passion that you that you share. Um, so I'll start with a question to Ashinsa, actually. Uh, you're a biotech content coordinator for an IT organization. And that seems like really intense and challenging work, but you're also the head of conservation for the youth wing of the WNPS. Um, so there's two demanding roles that you're juggling, Ashinsa. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about the choices there and and why uh, why you why you make the time uh, for both of them. That's true. I mean, I love my full time job, right? The company I work for is great, and I get to do a lot of reading of scientific information, and I get to write also. So both of those things I absolutely love doing. But I'm somebody who has a lot of different interests and I've always been someone who likes to do multiple things to keep myself occupied because then whenever I want to change, I can always do something different, right? And I think Sri Lanka has a lot to protect. We're very lucky to have a lot of biodiversity in the country. So that means we have a lot of different types of animals like reptiles and birds and 
corals and mushrooms and lots of ecosystems. So rainforests, beaches, mangroves, and some of these are endemic, which means that you only find them in Sri Lanka. So if they die out, if we lose them, if they become extinct, the whole world loses them. So we, and we've had a lot of problems. We've had a lot of deforestation, pollution. So trees in the forest have been cut down. Uh, plastic has been thrown just into canals that ends up in the ocean. So I think it's important that those of us who love wildlife and nature try to protect it in whatever way we can. And that is why I think it's important to make time for both these things. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's really, really great. Like so inspiring as well, right, Kavita? Absolutely. And I mean, in just those two minutes, we learned so much. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I'm just going to jump right in now and pose uh, my first question to Manindra. Uh, Manindra, I started following your Instagram handle very recently. Um, and I'm a huge fan of... Uh, nature okay let me put it that way i'm not so much uh, a jungle person so to speak uh, unlike ashinsa and you it's not like i return to the jungle you know every every few months but having said that i'm very close to nature and i and i feel like a very closeness to nature and so on my instagram i follow a lot of pages that feature uh, photography of wildlife and you know natural habitats and ecosystems and I must say, some of which are, you know, like Nat Geo and, you know, right up there, globally renowned, right? But I have to say, not that my opinion matters, but I have to say um, yours is right up there with all of them. Um, I really, really enjoy, you know, clicking on your page and taking a look at uh, some of your pictures. Um, I, I mean, thank you so much, first and foremost, for doing this, right? But I would really like to know what your process is when you undertake uh, these little trips um, do you go specifically to take the photographs or are you just there to just enjoy the scenery and you just happen to take the pictures whilst you're there please just tell us why you do it and how you do it right okay a bit of a long question uh, long yes, answer sorry. I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, see uh, thank you so much first and foremost thank you for uh, that lovely introduction uh, and uh, Ashinsa, I really can't beat her with that introduction that he, she gave. So don't expect much from me in, in terms of that. But I mean, see, I'm not a person who has studied nature, to be really honest, uh, uh, right? So uh, how all this started is, is, be, is purely because of how I was brought up, right? See, uh, my family is, is a very, uh, my, my father and mother, right? They are very uh, jungle savvy people. Uh, so they've been going to the jungle, uh, you know, from way uh, back then. So I think that that's where my love for the jungle also came about. See, even my brother and sister are, are, are on, on, on the same mold or same path when it comes to the jungle, right? So as, as you mentioned earlier, I was uh, taken to the jungle when I was six months old. Not that I had a choice uh, back then, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but then again, see, that's how, that's how I've, I've uh, you know, come come on, on this path and that's how I've, I've uh, loved what I do in in, uh, in in photographing what I see in the jungle. Uh, to answer your question specifically, no, I don't go to the jungle to specifically photograph uh, wildlife. Uh, photography is, if you, if you, if someone tells me that I'm a photographer, uh, I would say, no, I'm not a photographer. I just post uh, pictures that I, you know, come across or the memories that I come across whilst being in the jungle on my IG page. So I don't specifically go to uh, uh, the the jungle uh, to uh, photograph a leopard, a, 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 a peacock or an elephant uh, per se, right? I just go purely for that detachment that it, it entails. Uh, because, you know, uh, people who go to the jungle would know that, you know, most of the jungles uh, in, in Sri Lanka don't have, you know, mobile connectivity. So I love that fact because uh, with the job that I do uh, related to ERP and all these implementations, you know, uh, being on calls the entire day, I uh, personally want that detachment and uh, the best way that I could detach from the normal lifestyle that I, uh, you know, spend is to is to go to the jungle and then spend 
uh, 3 or 4 days in the jungle and come back because during that period i will not have mobile signals even if i have mobile signals i will uh, definitely put uh, my phone on airplane mode uh if my bosses are, are listening to this uh, sorry but that's what i do <laughs> uh, because uh, because i need that uh, detachment uh, and uh, so i recharge from from that experience and and i come back and i work and then i pretty much go to the jungle uh, every two months i guess um and if i could i would visit more but uh, it it's again purely not to photograph specific animals per se it's it's purely for that Uh, experience uh, that i get uh, in terms of detachment and and that unpredictability of being in with nature oh fantastic um thank you kavita for sharing um your screen with us uh, you'll be able to see some of the photographs that manindra has uploaded onto his page if you haven't already started following him um i'm encouraging you to do so right now <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for talking us through that you know the the beginnings of it so baby days in in, in other words right 6 months um and and interesting because uh i mean the next question that that we have is actually for ashinsa um you know is it is it a how how has becoming a jungle person been for you where did it start for you um, because again like you were telling us about balancing the two roles and the reasoning why you make time for it how do you um, tell us a bit about where it started i think similar to manindra my journey was also it also came from the time i was uh, a child and from my family so i've always been a wildlife person thanks to my dad and i've been visiting national parks forever and we also traveled a lot around sri lanka and that let me see all these amazing things that we have and when you see all this you really understand how much we have to protect in this country and i i still love being outdoors whenever i can and my grand uncle was actually how my dad got his love for wildlife and my grand uncle he wasn't afraid of anything so he'd handle geckos and birds and snakes and like you know go after khabar goyas and he became for anything so and it's his influence that really shaped my dad and then that shaped me so thanks to him i know how to breathe through a snorkel and how to use binoculars how to focus them how to take care of them and uh, he used to take me out bird watching to the aktidia marsh now it's more of a walking path but uh, back then there were a lot of uh birds that used to come there so he used to take me bird watching and would identify them and tell me their names so i learned through that and so the i was also able to identify them on their own so loving nature and animals was not something that was i thought of as being like a special thing it was always there in the background so you know it just kind of became part of who i was and similarly it was also uh, kind of added to by reading and literature because my dad and his family they are all uh, big time literature fans and some of them are teachers and so before i was able to read my dad would be reading to my sister and i and one of my favorites was the jungle book by rudyard kipling and among those stories also uh, my favorite story was the one of ricky tikki tavi the mongoose so a love for both reading and wildlife kind of made me the jungle person i am today fantastic well, that's just amazing so um, those of you who have been following us for a while now will know that kavita and i are all about stories and literature and that's what we are passionate about right so uh, i think the audience by now can get an idea as to why we picked these two professionals to <laughs> to be featured today and you'll get a, a further insight as to why we asked manindra to join us today because that's going to be connected to my next question okay so manindra my question is to you so ashinsa loves her stories and she loves books and she's in, and she's a huge bibliophile um but you you tell stories you you tell your own story you create your own story through your instagram handle um and what um uh, uh, both kavita and i find extremely uh interesting and inspiring are the little captions that you put along with your photographs right um 
I find it extremely, I don't know, uh, uh, very inspiring um, and very heartening. Uh, it's very encouraging to read these captions, actually, because it gives a little bit of insight as to uh, what led you to take this picture um, and helps us to understand what you were thinking at the time you were taking the picture. And you also kind of drop in a few little nuggets of information in there as well, so that we are more knowledgeable after, you know, visiting your page. Okay, so with your permission, I'm going to quote one of the captions to one of your photographs, right? And I'm paraphrasing here, but it goes something like this. Um, I'm quoting Manindra here. I've been asked, why do I go back over and over again to the same jungle to take the same picture of the same animal? I go back to be in the jungle because that is where I've grown up and made the best memories over the past 30 years. The perfect picture or perfect sighting may matter to most, but I value the experiences instead. Okay, if I could, I would just give you a standing ovation right now, okay? That's superb. That's just so amazing. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you, right? Uh, would you like to share... Uh, one or two of these memories that you hold dear to you, we'd love to know. Uh, okay. Um, I'll, I'll start uh, in a different way, emotionally, okay. because, uh, see, as I mentioned earlier, and, and as that, that quote uh, suggested also, uh, I don't go for a specific shot, say, for example, a leopard or, or an elephant or a bear. I don't go for a specific uh, uh, frame to to photograph per se, right? I always go for for that entire experience, and, and as I explained earlier, that detachment and that whole unpredictability in, in being in nature, right? So, yes, there are loads of memories uh, while speaking in the jungle for th for thirty years, right? That's a long time. Uh, uh, so obviously, there are, have, have been multiple, you know, elephant uh, charges, herds of elephants chasing uh, behind us, you know, and then leopards walking just a few meters uh, in front of uh, where we sleep. All those, uh, I mean, and, 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 and once in Yala, I saw five leopards uh, in, in one, on, on top of one rock, right? So I think uh, that's a pretty, pretty amazing uh, moment uh, or a highlight in, in my, you know, uh, years in the jungle. Uh, but see... None of those specific moments really uh, matter to me because the entire experience uh, in all of my jungle trips is, is, is what matters to me in, um, in, in, re in reality, right? Because, you know, from the time that I step inside the jungle, uh, you know, even this tiniest, uh, you know, bird, uh, the bug or whichever animal that I come across and even, you know, being in that, you know, whole environment of the wind, uh, the stars in the night, I, I mean, I can't really explain that feeling, uh, uh, if you know what I mean, but uh, to specifically answer your question, no, I don't have specific memories per se. Say, for example, you know, seeing this leopard or seeing this elephant or like that, but it's just that the entire experience uh, of each and every trip that I make uh, is, is dear to me. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Yes, so um, so okay. Let's let's talk a little bit now um, in terms of uh, the the time that you make for nature, the both of you. Um, and uh, my my question is um, to to Ashin sir to start off on that track. Um, tell us a bit about the work that you do with uh, the Wildlife and Nature Protection Society of Sri Lanka. In other words, WNPS. So gladly, because it's a, it takes up a large chunk of my time, and I'm very glad to give that time. Uh, so the WNPS is uh, one of the, the oldest conservation societies in the world. It is now 127 years old. I think it's the third oldest conservation society in the world. And we have many subcommittees that focus on different things, because there is a lot of work to be done. So we have marine, wildcats, elephants, and so on. And one of these subcommittees is the youth wing, and that is where I am most active. What we try to do is to educate young people, especially people like us, like you who are watching today, uh, on all the amazing animals and plants and ecosystems that we have in Sri Lanka, so that you understand why we need to protect all of this. Because just somebody just telling you, you have to protect this is not enough. You need to know why it's important to do this. 
uh, and then we tell you know people a few things that they can do in your school in your home in your village and we go all around sri lanka doing this as much as we can uh, we work with over 50 schools now uh, and we also try to take school children into national parks on field trips because like i said earlier when you see something that's when you truly understand and that is what changes somebody right so i'll never forget this encounter we had uh, with some school kids in waskamo so waskamo is an area where you get a lot of elephants coming into people's homes and destroying crops and so on so when we took these kids into the park uh, and they saw this big herd of elephants coming near the jeep they were quite scared because the only experience they've had with elephants is uh, a negative one so they were quite worried and we told them no don't worry they they're not going to do anything to you just sit quietly let them pass by the jeep and they went the whole herd went just by the jeep and these children were amazed that the elephants weren't doing any harm to them that you could exist peacefully around elephants so that wasn't that possibility wasn't something that they had thought of before or had realized so although they live on the border of the parks a lot of these kids haven't gone into the actual park itself wow. so unfortunately these days we can't go out to schools all over a lot of what we do is virtual but we are we are trying to do sessions for schools and we do a lot of social media posting uh, because one big thing we focus on is to create awareness so we have all sorts of competitions you know short story poetry three all related to data and wildlife and so the youth wing itself is for people 13 years old and above but for those younger the wnps has another sub committee called wild kids and so the wild kids has activities just for kids and one big thing that they do when everything goes back to normal you can look forward to this is what you call a wetland walk and wnps has been doing this for a few years so you go to a wetland that's like this marshy area and we all separate into groups and we go exploring and we see what we can find so we teach you how to identify birds how to identify butterflies trees you take a look around you document what you see you take some photos so it's a really nice outdoor activity for kids so and it's not just wnps there are other organizations also doing these activities for kids and even adults love this activity because for them also it's an experience uh, so that is some of the work that the youth wing and that the wild kids and that the wnps does fantastic oh, that's just amazing kavita right ah, i mean i mean that education perspective and like just you know being able to like transmit that message um just just i mean taking from what ashin sir said and mokshini uh, like you mentioned at the start of today's discussion restoration generation is is the theme for this year's world environment day so it's amazing that you guys are actually making it part of your mandate to spend time educating not just this generation but you know generations to come that's i mean kudos for 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 doing that doing and why do you think was set up to inspire the next generation and to stir a passion within them for conservation and oh, so i mean it's it's i would say i would say it's actually very visionary of you to do that uh, because you've started this work some time back and it's only now that the world is catching up and they're talking about a restoration generation whereas you have already started this work and 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 we wish you all the very best in these endeavors and maybe just as you say when things go back to normal uh, kavita and i can be uh, two of the adults who actually join in in one of these uh, wetland walks it love to oh, be a part yeah. of that <laughs> okay so my next question is to manindra and it's also connected to um your passion for wildlife for manindra now um you uh, you are doing a very responsible job right <laughs> Uh, your head of consulting at Fortitude Private Limited for ERP uh, engagements, right? So, I mean, I I can imagine that taking up a lot of your time, um, but you somehow find time for this hobby, and I'm saying hobby within air quotes because I would say it's a lot more than that. It's very important work that you're doing, even though to you. it's a form of uh, relaxation and you know it's a way that you spend your free time um i would like to know why you do this i mean uh, a okay so it's a it's it's a, a few elements to this question a why why do you do this right 
B, um, you take your photographs and you post it on your Instagram handle. And your Instagram handle is a public profile. It's not private, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, and you freely share these photographs with the public, um, those who wish to follow you. You can easily have an exhibition or you can, you know, sell them, um, but you choose to generously share these photographs with uh, a, the Sri Lankan audience or even a wider audience. Why do this? Uh, yeah, so Mukhini, a good question. Uh, I think uh, as Ashin some mentioned, right, uh, I'm not you know, into that sort of conservation to be really honest because of, of, of the work that I'm doing and I haven't really thought about, you know, formally getting in that sort, that level of conservation because I think she's, she's uh, doing a great job. Uh, I mean, kudos to her, right? Uh, uh, but, I mean, uh, from my end, uh, what I, I mean, if at all my, uh, you know, posts on, on my IG handle, if it, uh, you know, provides that experience to a wide audience uh, of, of, of that moment with my picture as well as my caption uh, that, uh, that, that I post with it, then I think that uh, helps uh, a wide audience to understand or be in that moment. And, if in, and, and in return, if that, uh, you know, enables uh, conservation or at least that thought process of conservation, in a wide audience, I think uh, that 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 really means a lot to me. So I think that's why I I made the profile public uh, and and you know available to everyone to see. And because you know there are lots of examples where you know most of my friends who follow me uh, are not you know close friends as well because I haven't uh, met some of them also. But they when when whenever I put a post on IG, there there are loads of you know comments, uh, you know personal messages that come through. Oh, man. Uh, is this really, you know, possible to see uh, or are these really, you know, in Sri Lanka? That sort of comments also come through from Sri Lankans uh, themselves because that, that means that, you know, uh, there are people, as Ashin some mentioned, that they don't have that uh, level of exposure to the nature and what is available in Sri Lanka. So I think if, if that, uh, you know, message goes out to, to the public via my profile, then I think uh, that that's the that's the message that I want to spread as well. And to your first question in terms of work and how I get get time to do all this, I hope my bosses aren't aren't listening <laughs> to this. Uh, so, I mean, see if I if I could do this more often, I would love to do it because uh, I mean that that's where my passion lies, right? But see, in all honesty, it it, it involves a lot of planning. You know, the teams that I work with, they are supportive, uh, you know, nature towards, you know, getting the work done and planning well in advance. Because, you know, when I plan a jungle trip, right, I, I always plan it, it uh, you know, one and a half months before, right? So then I have, you know, uh, visibility to, you know, to take leave, plan leave uh, and, you know, do the necessary arrangements within the working space so that, uh, that all that piece is covered. Uh, so bosses you don't have to worry about it uh, everything's under control <laughs> that's fantastic that just shows actually the priority you give to it and it looks to me like uh, everyone in your workplace has already identified you as a jungle person as well right <laughs> yeah for sure i mean say from my school days uh, i mean uh, i've been called different nicknames uh, related <laughs> to the jungles right so everyone from from school uh, knows that that I am, you know, crazy about the jungle and uh, that whole experience around it. So I think it, 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 it's known, uh, even with the office crowd. I mean, most of them now come with me uh, on my trips uh, because of my, you know, uh, IG profile and stuff like that and, and, and the stories that I've told them. So most of them tag along with me now on, on these trips. Uh, so I think it, it, it's a good addiction to have as long as you do it uh, in, the, in the right spirit. I think like we, what you're doing with your photos is also definitely a kind of awareness raising, right? Because like you said, people message you, people ask about it. And what we want is for people to be talking about this, right? For people to know this is out there. Yep, exactly. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't undervalue how the impact that your photographs are having because I think they are having a significant impact and you need more people sharing uh, the photographs that they take, the things that they learn and putting it out there for people to be amazed at it because there is so much to be amazed at. Yep, yep, exactly. <laughs>
No, so and interesting, you know. So like, um, both of you have told us so much about what drives you and and what uh, you know brought you to this point. Um, I, I I think if if we were to like go into the 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 the, the next set of questions, um, how would a, a young person? you know, with a similar passion, maybe inspired by photographs, maybe inspired by, you know, reading or having heard something that somebody spoke of, basically the stories that the jungle has to tell. Um, Ashin, so if you could perhaps start us off, like what could a young person do? Does it have to be through an organization? Does it have to be, you know, with, a, with the guidance of an institution? Tell us your thoughts. So I think, I mean, you can do both. Uh, you can certainly join an organization and we would love to see more young people involved in conservation. I think the good thing is that there are a lot of young people already now who are getting involved in conservation and understand that this is an important thing. So, but the more the merrier, right, for a cause such as this. So if you do like nature and wildlife and you want to be part of a larger organization, Sri Lanka itself and globally, we have quite a few conservation organizations that you can be a part of and that have little little things that you can do. So, um, but you don't have to be part of a larger organization to do something for conservation. So for example, like, like Manindri, you can take your photos, you can share them, you can share some information that is also doing something for conservation. But there are a few other things you can do at home. For example, you can try to minimize your waste so that you make sure that you don't cause part of the problem of pollution. So you can try to maybe not use a plastic straw, try to use a bamboo straw, don't buy, um, you know, disposable water bottles, try to have like one water bottle that you take with you, you refill it and take it with you on your trip so that you don't buy like a whole bunch of 500 milliliter plastic water bottles that you drink and then throw away. Then um, you can try to upcycle some of the things that you would throw away. So for example, if you have a bottle or an old container, you can cut it, you can paint it, and you can do turn it into a flower pot, turn it into like a pen holder. There are lots of creative little things that you can do for conservation. Similarly, uh, if you want to have animals coming into your garden more, plant some flowers that butterflies really like or some fruit trees so that then, you know, birds will start coming into your garden. So although you don't think of these things as being for conservation, these are very important things for conservation because you find, especially in the cities, there are not enough garden spaces. You don't see very many butterflies around anymore. So if you can plant a few bushes with flowers that the butterflies like, uh, put a bird bath outside, have some birds coming in, uh, you know, and don't kill the millipedes and the little bugs that you see around in the garden, you know, because th they also play a very important role in these ecosystems. So you need all these different animals around. So you can uh, do something formally for conservation by joining an organization, or you can just do whatever you can at home. Fantastic. Superb. <laughs> I think I think I took a few tips from that as well. Um, you know, it's really it's really fun. we don't realize that on a day to day basis we do so much to harm uh, the environment. And you know, it's so we're running out of time, um, and that's one of the reasons why Kavita and I actually decided, right, Kavita, to have this um, to mark World Environment Day because we felt that it was a very very huge issue that needs attention and we wanted to use the platform of Storyland SL to reach an audience and um, help spread the word right and um, so thank you thank you for that Tashin sir. It's a pleasure um, and I'm glad you did because you need more people like that who are willing to use the platforms that they have engage their audience and spread this message of conservation. Yeah, and it's just been, it's been an educational experience for the two of us as well. Um, Good. Marindra, yeah. <laughs> so Marindra, um, yeah, so if I, so you and Ashin sir, are doing your part in spreading the word, you know, and, and, and so many young people are catching the flame, you know, and, and, and they themselves are now spreading the word as well, right, with their enthusiasm. But with this enthusiasm, we also see, particularly where photography is concerned, we see uh, a, a, a disturbing rise in the frequency of 
aspiring photographers sometimes um, in their endeavor to get the perfect shot, violating some of the rules and regulations that are in place to protect the very wildlife and the very wildlife that they're trying to photograph and their habitats. Like for example, we have seen in the recent past how, you know, um, people, they are in their uh, uh, Jeeps, but sometimes without a tracker or they, they wear off the track in order that they, you know, can chase that particular animal that is being elusive so that they can, you know, take that perfect shot. Um, can you, you know, share with us how if a young person wants to be a serious photographer of wildlife, how they can do this responsibly? Uh, again, uh, well, that's a very good question, uh, which requires, I mean, different angles to the answers i guess uh, to the answer i guess I, i'll try uh, my best to answer with my limited knowledge right uh, see again i'm not a photographer uh, i i i as i mentioned i i, I love the experience so i i go to uh, to get that experience over and over again but yes what 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 you're saying is really uh, really really true because nowadays we see loads of new uh, new photographers uh, i mean that's that's a really good trend don't get me wrong it, it's really good i mean uh, you know people are getting involved uh, getting to know all these places and and knowing the value of it uh, more people will will spread more more the, the the message around right but what you have to understand is that see i've been doing this for for 30 years right and i've been continuously going to the jungles even through uh, through the period of war also like even you know places like Yala, Vilpatu, Kumana, those places were hot spots uh, when the war was there. Uh, you know, and then still we 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 those days also we we went. You know, a lot of people ask me why do you take that risk? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm also not entirely sure why we took that risk back then. But then again, still when my dad and mom were like, okay, let's go to Vilpatu or Yala, uh, I, we were like, okay, let's go. Why not? Right. I mean, I did, I may not have known, not known the risk back then, but then again, that that love for for nature, I think, uh, you know, got got the better of us. Uh, but then again, see, starting from then, uh, you know, looking back to now, you you look at the number of jeeps inside the park is crazy, right? Back then, when we were doing it, uh, you know, when I was about you know seven or ten years old, right? Uh, it was only our jeep in 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 the entire park, right? Uh, I remember, you know, the uh, army officials being on, on top of trees also uh, in India National Park uh, purely to protect, uh, you know, uh, uh, the jungle as well as, uh, you know, the terrorist activities being there in, in the park vicinity, right? So those days, it was only our, our jeep uh, inside the park, right? Now, it, it, if you go to Yala, for example, right, I, I, I honestly don't uh, visit Yala now because it, it, it it's not the same experience. Uh, sometimes the way you know people behave inside the park uh, doesn't go well with me, so that I I, I consciously limit uh, my visits to Yala. Uh, see, it is all about the mindset, right? Yes, I understand. You know, the perfect shot matters, but then again, you have to have that broader picture in mind to say that look, why are you in this you know moment? Uh, uh, is it uh, to get your perfect shot or is it to, you know, admire nature in its truest form, right? So all, that mindset of why you do that really matters. And if it comes from the heart, uh, the way you behave in the park would, would be uh, a reflection of that, I guess, right? Say, for example, uh, I mean, you know, overcrowding. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems in, in, in Yala, for example, right, is, is, is mobile signal coverage, right? Because they put up that, uh, you know, mobile, you know, tower uh, near the gate. And from that day onwards, it has been crazy. Because, you know, as soon as someone sees uh, a, a leopard, for example, right? Uh, and then they, they use their mobile phones to call the other, other person who is in, in the park somewhere, you know, somewhere further away. And they just rush to that 
particular spot to get a get a shot of that you know leopard and there will be you know hundreds and hundreds of jeeps in in one location just surrounding one tree where the leopard is on top of or something like that right so yes i do that sometimes also but i've i've learned over the years that it's not worth it right because it, it that is not why i go to the jungle to be regions you know i don't go to the jungle to you know be a pain to that animal i i want to you know experience the nature in its truest form so now if i get a call or even if my tracker gets a call saying that look there is a leopard on the, on top of a tree on on this particular place should we go i said no let's not uh, do that uh, because i know that there will be loads of other vehicles rushing to the same place and i know that i wouldn't be able to get that experience because you know 100 dot vehicles would be surrounding it so i wouldn't i would say to the guy look i would rather not you know go there i'll i'll just you know uh, do my thing over here you know just just catch a glimpse of something else that is uh, available to see right so it is about the mindset uh that you go in with uh, at the first place so if it comes within uh, within you to you know basically uh, uh, to 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 protect uh, nation and to have that uh, that uh, moment to be cherished in the truest form i think you would uh, need to take a step back and then uh, you know ask yourself why do you really want to do this is it for the picture only if it's a picture only then your 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 values are in a different uh, place uh whereas you know yes there are people who do it, does it for the commercial purpose as well because it is a living right um, it is not in only only in sri lanka it is in africa india all those places it's there they do it for the commercial aspect of it which is fine also but you need to know your limits as well you know if you do if you if you Uh, set up a scene and you know get a while uh, get a get a shot uh, staged which happens in, in sri lanka also right uh, mind mind you it, it does happen uh, i i i don't believe that's the right uh, way Lally. of doing it. okay that's news sorry i had to like yeah what yeah. is that okay so yeah to to reiterate it is a mindset how well uh, what your where your values lie in terms of uh, what you're doing so yeah advices would be you know simple things like don't uh, overcrowd uh, an animal uh, you know don't uh, speed uh, within the park limits uh, even if it's you know outside the park limits if you're you know going through a jungle you know stretch you can always have you know animals crossing the road like so always be mindful of of uh, what can happen uh, because you know you 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 can't really control your vehicle or the speed of the vehicle in in a quick uh, uh, a fraction of a second right so all those you have to be very mindful and and uh, you know in control of what you're doing and stuff like flash photography you know uh, if you know that animals are sensitive to light right uh, don't use flash photography i for uh, for for one i don't uh, use flash photography because i hate hate that effect of you know that bluish sort of light uh, you don't see flash photography in my ig profile right if there is no light i wouldn't you know even bother to take the picture i would just you know admire the uh, the moment rather than you know have the food, have the camera all all you know the set up and and all that stuff so avoid using flash photography uh stop overcrowding because that's not the purpose uh when sharing locations right say for example if it's a tusker and all and who, who, unfortunately the it there is a commercial you know mindset behind it so if you're posting uh, something on on social media don't disclose the location that's something that i uh, that i that i uh, you know follow very closely because if it's a leopard it is not a problem to say it's civil park to national park yeah all national park because it, it, it everyone knows that the leopard exists there right but if it's like a specific task that you're you know disclosing the location of say for example you it it's, it it can be seen in in the situlpower road for example right then you are just giving out a message to whoever that may have a wrong you know intention of look this this task was you know spotted on this specific road it might be there on the next day also and they can have bad intentions as well so that's why you know simple things like that can can make a difference um uh, yeah so those would be the tips i would say but the main one would be the mindset and the right attitude towards it 
Bravo, Manindra. Thank you so much for that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's where your heart is that matters. And thank you so much for, you know, having the your heart in the right place and for having the guts to say what you just said. I'm, I'm sure our young audience watching this is truly, truly inspired by what you shared. Thank you so much. Really. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we've had like some really beautiful ideas and thoughts and some, you know, uh, I think memories also shared uh, by the two of you. We're heading into the last part of the discussion today. Uh, one, one thing, uh, one yes. thing I, I, I think I forgot. Yeah. Feeding animals. Oh, yes. Feeding. Feeding, okay. yeah. Yeah, feeding animals. I mean, people think uh, that feeding animals or wild animals is a good thing. Yeah. And then it, 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 you know, it, it, uh, you know, you, you get what, what I'm saying, right? So feeding animals, mm -hmm. ah, yeah. ah, yeah. you know, that, that sort of feeling, right? But mm. feeding a wild animal is, is endangering uh, uh, that animal or, or, you know, you know, you're bringing out uh, uh, them from their comfort zone or their natural habitat, which, you know, puts them in danger. Say, yeah, for example, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the 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 tusker the famous tusker in in Yala national park called gamunu right so there has been incidents of you know intentionally or unintentionally him him getting you know a hold of uh, food uh, you know human food uh, maybe from a bungalow maybe from a from a from a jeep right and then he continuously comes after vehicles yeah. which at the end of the day will put that animal in in harm's way Whereas, say for example, if 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 something happens uh, uh, and if it if it you know kills a human, which I hope doesn't happen, then uh, all of a sudden that blame goes to that animal, right? Yeah. And then the officials would be like, okay, this animal is dangerous to the system, and we have to put it out. You know, that sort of mindset is there. So that all started with with uh, you know that simple act of kindness of feeding animals, but it doesn't uh, do good. So just wanted to highlight also because I think that's an important point uh, that people have to keep in mind. No, it is a very you. common uh, it's a very common uh, problem in the Butala uh, road right. where you know elephants just stand on on top of the, uh, yeah. on the road and I saw in, recently in, on a social media channel a very popular social media channel they've uh, you know put up a video uh, of a, of a vehicle stopping and and uh, you know giving uh, the elephant plant and and uh, and and watermelon and stuff like that. I was like, yeah. that's not the right message to, you know, spread on, on social media. Yes, it would get you views and all that, but that's not the right message. You don't uh, feed wild animals and then publish it on social media, let alone do it. <laughs> no, and I mean, honestly, thank you for, for, for bringing that up because, you know, we're talking today about, uh, you know, generation restoration. Um, sorry, I think I flipped it. Restoration generation. Um, and I think as human beings, we often forget that there's a reason, you know, we have a, a, a responsibility for the plant to, towards the planet. Um, and at the end of the day, you, you, like you said, Manindra, it might be, you know, with this mentality of kindness, for example, or, you know, to, to feed an animal, but you're altering an animal's behavior and that behavior becomes habit and then the habit becomes something that's perceived. Um, so it's, I think, important that you shared it and thank you so much again for, for bringing it up. Um, so um, I think, you know, we've, we've spoken ab about, you know, the things to watch out for as well. Um, Ashin, sir, as we go into the last part of the discussion, um, you, you're an avid reader um, and you've been able to, like you shared with us at the start of the discussion, uh, some of your inspiration has actually come from, from books about wildlife. Um, where Storyland is still, can you recommend a few good books on wildlife for our young audience, please? I can definitely recommend. And there are so many, but I think I'll talk about like my top picks. So uh, one I've already mentioned, and that is The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. So I have an edition that has a really nice cover also. Yes, and you can find it very easily uh, in any bookshop. Uh, so yeah, I, I really recommend The Jungle Book. And another one is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. So I've got this edition uh, and you can find various yeah. editions depending on uh, the level of reader. So you have some that are quite simple and some that are a bit more detailed. 
and it's it's very nice uh, its main characters are badger a toad a mole and a rat so yeah that's a, that's i enjoyed that book and this book is a lesser known book it's called wild in the backyard and i actually know the author she's a friend of mine uh, her name is arifa tezin and she grew up in the jungles of india and she also has all these amazing wildlife stories and she writes a lot of these books for kids uh, so this details all the different critters and creepy crawlies that you find in your backyard and gives you some really cool information about it so this also you can buy it i think at vijitapa and at some of these other bookshops it's available here um and i really i really enjoy this so she talks about bats and mosquitoes and grasshoppers and woodpeckers and basically all this wildlife that you get right in your home garden so this is a nice book to get to know a little bit more about the creatures in your back garden uh, so yeah Good there's love. a lot to read about wildlife uh, and reading books like this lets you learn in a really fun way and an engaging way and in a way that you will remember fantastic is it something that you've got on your list in the future since to author a book maybe um we'll see stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah she did say no kavita <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe we can feature her in one of our uh, meet the author sessions yeah. uh, okay or oh, send you a goal for some day <laughs> <laughs> fantastic looking forward to it okay so last question uh, is to you manindra um, it's been a really engaging uh, discussion but I, as much as we would love to go on for longer uh, in the interest of time we will have to pose you uh, our pose to you our last question and that is okay just simply as a photographer uh, i know you don't you don't like to call yourself one but you know let's just face it you are okay you're a damn good one as well okay you know take it from us um what would you like to see more of in sri lanka I thought uh, you were going to ask. Uh, do have I read any books? So I am. <laughs> you can throw that, that in. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, if you have, please share that in for us. Well. <laughs> so, no, I am not a book person. Uh, see. Uh, okay. So uh, glad that question didn't come up. Um, <laughs> when you say uh, places, as in uh, what you what what I want to see in Sri Lanka in terms of. Improvement in the wildlife sort of space, or any 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 um, specific no, places. No, as. A, as a photographer okay. what would you like to see more because the, as we discussed now in the uh, previous two questions there's a lot of photography now right there are yeah. lots of upcoming photographers also uh, is there something you wish there would be more of in sri lanka um, uh, you know what what you have what you feature in your instagram handle is very different to what we see on you know other uh, social media platforms is there something that you'd like to see more of based on you know uh, what we discussed earlier during the course of our discussion uh see uh, it depends on the passion of, of a person as well right uh, see uh, since my passion is on on jungles and wildlife uh, hence all of my you know uh, photos uh, mean not not everything is on jungles and wildlife there are different stuff as well but then again uh my ones uh, go towards the theme of wildlife and and jungles because my passion lies there but you know different people have different passions say for example right uh, even though we myself ashinsa we speak about jungles and wildlife some people don't have the same passion so we can't expect them to be uh, you know having uh, animal pictures or nature pictures in the ig handles right that doesn't work like that so i guess follow your passion in terms of where your heart lies say for example it can be passion it can be food because i i follow a lot of pages related to food photography fashion photography it can be you know uh, macro photography say for example you know specific people it's on the wildlife uh, you know channel itself but then again they don't like elephants you know uh, leopards and all those huge animals it's, it's purely on on bugs right oh, so that's right. On, that's on macro photography so there are specialized pages uh, on on macro photogra- macro photography as well so essentially it, it depends on what you like and where your heart lies as well and uh, where and 
photography is something that uh, that needs time as well i guess so for example if if i don't think in, everyone would be able to you know uh go to the jungle uh, every two months and you know spend four nights there and do what i do or what ashin said us right that's not practical right photography relates to what your past times or what your favorite uh, you know moments are in terms of life as uh, if you know what i mean so follow that aspect of it rather than trying to copy someone else because then it will give you better results and uh, be, because you know you have that passion to you know improve what you do you have the eye to you know capture that moments in a different way so always go on that path of where your heart lies in terms of you know photography it can be food it can be whatever uh, but try not to copy just because one person does uh, you know leopard photography for example you not you don't have to you know copy it and you know be disappointed okay i can't you know go to the parks as often as i want and all that always have have a mindset of okay what can i access and what what can i uh, what what do i have in terms of uh, you know what i like and then you know uh, stick towards that this would be the messaging i guess fantastic yeah that's 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 really really good good solid advice follow your heart don't copy and do it responsibly <laughs> okay so i think that's all we have time for right kavita yes sadly but honestly uh, so much that we have learned yeah. in these 60 minutes uh, i think you've shared with us your 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 uh, the reasoning behind your passion and also some really great advice and insights uh, so to all of our viewers i hope you've learned as much as we have um if you haven't done so yet in the course of this discussion do so now please follow uh, manindra and ashinsa on instagram manindra is uh, manindra.d and ashinsa goes as biospeak that b i o s p e a k um for some fantastic insights on science and the environment and of course the stories that go with their love for uh, the work that they do and the passion that they have uh, for the wildlife of sri lanka mokshini yes thank you so much uh, ashin sa and manindra um like we said at the start it has been nothing short of an honor and a privilege to have you with us uh, it's not often that we find kindred spirits um and uh, the two of us uh, kavita and i being uh, you know so passionate about uh, stories and reading and writing um it was a no brainer uh, to us when we were when we first started conceptualizing this project to have to invite the two of you because a you're young uh, b you're passionate about what you do and c you're all about stories right uh, and more important most importantly you're all about saving our planet and it's the only one we have so thank you so much thank you so very much thank, thank you, you for having us it was such a pleasure Thank you so much, guys. Uh, means a lot. Uh, thank you. It, it has been a really, you know, lovely session. I think I've learned a lot from Ashin sir here. So, uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, stay safe. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing more of the good work that you do. All the very best to you both. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Stay safe.